All right, this is a recording about exam one of the spring 2024 semester for CISP 310. So what you see here is um, me doing the exam and we'll ignore the first part here. And obviously you should read, you should read all the instructions, but you know, we are gonna skip ahead to the first question. So the first question is in the form of asking you um, how do we get to a particular result so in this case uh, we are you know, looking at this portion okay this is the starting point because everything else about this you know do not need to be explained because those are given so we need to find out why we can conclude that the exclusive or between q0 t0 is going to be a zero so the trick to do this is to find out you know, what items are related to Q0 exclusive or with T0. And we find number six um, right here. It spells out exactly how Q0 is defined. So we'll put six here. Oh, okay, my pen is not working. And that's because I wasn't using a pen. I was using the highlighter. And now I need to get rid of the highlighted portion because that's not what I, I was intending to do. Okay, there we go. Get back to the pen and we are good to go again. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna write down six as one of the reason, but that's not the only reason. The other reason is because uh, Q0 is, oh, I take it back, sorry. Um, it's because, oh, I take it back. Okay, I messed up here. <clears throat> I totally messed up because I was quoting the wrong uh, definition. Because you know, Q0 exclusive or with T0 is D0. So we need to find the definition of D0, which is five. Okay. Let me see, am I still using a pen tool? Yep, I am using a pen tool. Okay, um, so we write down a 5 here, and in addition to 5, it's also because D0 is given to you as 0. So 5 and 9, in this case, would be applicable. Alright, on the next line, we have uh, the X, not X1 uh, and Y1, or not Q1 and T1 is false. So once again, you know, we want to find out what definition relates to that. Uh, we find that definition 1 relates to it, and we also know that T2 is a 0 because of 7. So that's how we fill in these two items. <coughs> and then on 14, it uh, claims that uh, Q0, not Q1 and T1, is a 0. So now, once again, we want to find out you know, how we know that, and that is basically... Um, it's because of 13, okay, so 13, um, yeah, because of the line before, because if the conjunct, if the, uh, excuse me, if the dis disjunction is a zero, that means each individual component of the disjunction is zero as well. So that's a 13, um, and that's it, okay? And then on 15, okay, I'm going to uh, move to the next page. Uh, so on 15, it's going to be 13 as well because it's coming from the same um, disjunction. So this is also because of 13. <coughs> and then on line uh, 16, uh, X1 has to be a 1 because there are two things. Because Y1 is a 1, which is 11, and also uh, 15. Okay, let me explain why that is the case. Because on, thir on 15, um, the conjunction between not x1 and y1 has to be a 0. But since y1 is given to you as a 1, so that means the negation of x1 has to be a 0 in order for the conjunction on line 15 to be a 0. So that means x1 has to be a 1 because not x1 has to be a 0. All right, so on the next line, we have the exclusive or between x1, y1 being a 0. And we recognize that as Q1 
and Q1 is a 1 because of line 10. So part of it is line 10. But the other part, okay, I have to scroll back now. Uh, part of the other part has to do with how Q1 is defined. And we can see how Q1 is defined here. So Q1 is defined to be X1 uh, exclusive or with Y1, which is on line 4. Okay, so that means that we have to use tan 4 here. And then we know that Q1 is a 0, and that has to do with line 14. Okay, so line 14 is 1, because on line 14, it says the negation of Q1 and T1 has to be a 0. But T1, okay, if I go back a little bit, so T1 is a, okay, we don't know T1 from here. Um, okay, so that does not help. All right, so we can rely on something else. We know 14 is important, but we, we don't know T1 yet. So you can tell when, when we know T1 is, uh, has a particular value, it is down here. So that means your 14 is probably not important. Okay, so let me back up <coughs> and get rid of the mentioning of 14. All right, it's not letting me back up. Okay, let me see if I can do this. I can erase it. Nope. Okay, that erased you know, something from the line before as well, which is not intended. Um, I think that was a 10. Nope, that wasn't a 10. Okay, I have to go back to the previous line to explain why that is a zero. It was a, okay, never mind. Um, all right, so it's X1 exclusive or with Y1. And we know four is important because four defines Q1. And we need to find out where we decide Q1 is a... Oh, okay. So that is... Okay, 4. Yep, okay, that's important. Okay, so I made another mistake in the previous step. So 4 is important, but 10 is not. So how do we know x1 exclusive or with y1 has to be a 0? Because q1 is a 0, is not known yet. And, oh, but we know what x1 and y1 are. Okay, so we look up, so 4 is not important yet at this point. So let's get rid of the 4. Um, we know what is x1 and y1. We know y1 is uh, because of 11, and then x1 is because of 16. There we go. Okay. All right, on to the next line. Uh, Q1 is a 0 because of um, line 17, okay, and also line 4. Because line 17 is claiming the um, exclusive or between x1 and y1 is a 0, and then line 4 says, you know, that is exactly how Q1 is defined. So now we know Q1 is a 0. All right, moving on to line 19, we know the exclusive or between x0, y0 is a 1. And with this one, it has to do with line 10. Okay, so this one has to do with line 10, because on line 10, you know, q1 is a 1. And now we have to look up the definition of q0, which is on line 6. So between line 10 and line 6, we now can conclude that x0 exclusive or with y0 is a 1. <coughs> On line 20, t1 is a 0. 
Um, so now we have to look up the reasons why it has to be a zero. Um, so basically that boils down to everything that has to do with that has to do with y1. Um, oh, no, not y1, but t1. So on line 14, uh, we know t1 and the negation of q1 is, um, is false. And then here, we know that q1 is a 0. So that means um, 18 is important to us. Um, and then line 14 is important to us. And between those two, we can now confirm that t1 has to be a 0. All right, on to the next one. Uh, the negation of x0, y, and y0, uh, or the uh, x0 and the, and the negation of y0 is a 1, because, um, the exclusive, because that's also the other way to write exclusive or. So we look up the exclusive or definition, and let's see. Because the exclusive or between x0, y0 is a 1. So I'm just looking up where we got that. So that's known as d1 as well. So let's look up where do we know conclude d0 no q0 I take it back so we know 10 is important okay and we also know that uh, q0 is defined as the exclusive or between x0 by 0. So that is on line 6. There we go. <clears throat> and now, um, okay, so that, that that's that. And on the next line, we have q1 exclusive or with t1 is false. That is basically our d1. So we want to look up, you know, do we have a conclusion about D1 at this point? Nope, that's on the two lines down. And then the other thing we can also rely on is do we know Q1 and T1 at this point? Q1 is a 0, which is on line 19, 18, sorry. And then uh, on line 20, we know what is T. So uh, between these two, we know the exclusive or between those two is false. On the next line, it is, <clears throat> that's basically how K, uh, T1 is defined. So we look up you know, T1, or the definition of T1, which is 2, and also whether T1 is now known. And it is known because of line 20. So between these two, we can confirm the statement on line 23. Uh, on line 24, D1 is known as a 0 because we know the exclusive OR uh, between Q1 and T1 is a 0, which is on line 22. But also, you know, we have to also quote the definition of D1, which is on line 3. So between those two, now we know D1 is a 0. T0 is a 1 because, so now we have to look up, you know, how we can know that. Um, so anything that has T0 in it potentially can be useful, but we have to be careful. Um, let's see. I was about to quote line 23, but line 23 requires an extra step. Um, and it does not confirm that T0 is a 1, so that is not useful. The other way to confirm T0 is a 1 to look is to look at D0 and Q0. So do we know Q0 and D0? So uh, 9 
is about d0. So we, if we look at 9, it is about d0. And q0 is a 1 as well, and that's on line 10. And then we also have to use the definition of um, uh, d0 in this case. So the definition of d0 is on line 5. And there we go. So these three things combined, you know, now can confirm t0 is a 1. On the next line, we have a confirmation that the negation of x0 and y0 is a 0. And that is coming from If we already know what is um, y0 at this point, and we don't, okay, so we cannot rely on that. Um, oh, because you know, that is a component of um, t1, and we know t1 is a 0, so that's on line 20. And then we combine that with um, how t1 is defined, which is on line 2. Um, and that's how we can confirm that uh, uh, x zero, not x0 zero and y0 zero is a 0. Um, and then on the next line, it has to do with line 26. And we also know that... Um, we also know that... Uh, the exclusive OR between x0, zero, y0 zero is a 1. And the reason why we know that is because Q0 is confirmed to be a 1 at this point, uh, which is on line 10. Okay. And that's how we can confirm that X0 um, or, and excuse me, X0 and not Y0 has to be a 1. It's because of these three particular reasons. So we have two, <coughs> excuse me, 26. Um, and 10. Um, and then on line 28, it has to do with line 27, and it also has to do with line 27. All right, so I think that's it. Okay, that spells out everything that we need to spell out. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that's question number one. And here's question number two. Uh, question number two in this case has uh, the p term that we are interested in. All right, so we'll answer one part at a time. So this is part one. Uh, the formula of t of i plus one, okay, t of i plus one is the big or. So because I use i over here, I cannot use i again over here. So I have to use, um, let's say, k. So k goes from zero to n and g of k, and then we have a big N in here, and that is going to go uh, with j being k plus 1 to N over here, um, and that's a P of j, and then this entire thing is ORed with the big N, where k again goes from 0 to N, and then outside we have T0, and then the term that we are ending together are p of k's. So that's you know, basically what I'm asking people to quote. If you're using your know, t of n plus 1, you know, that's fine too. Um, and then on part 2, um, the fan out of p1 in a 3-bit subtractor is... Um, so this one you can actually just use uh, the, the notes, but you can also use the equation you know, right above to generate it. Because in this case, you know, um, I is, oh, okay, this is supposed to be I, this is supposed to be I, and this is supposed to be I, because I don't have N anymore. Okay, all right, so T of 3, if we use that equation up here, is G of 0, P of 1, P of 2, or G of 1, P of 2, or G of 2, or t of 0, p of 0, p of 1, p of 2. And we just have to count the number of references to, uh, in this case, p1. So we see 1 here. <coughs> Excuse me. And we see 2 here. 
So for question number two, they find out. Oops. Okay, I touched the, <coughs> the edge. I touched the edge accidentally. So we now say the fan out is two. And then on question number three, in order to compute T64, there are many AND gates that need P of 37 as an input. Analyze the formula and express Analyze the formula in ex that expresses the borrow look ahead formula of T64 from left to right. Express the first conjunction that references P of 37 in the big or part. <clears throat> so that would be uh, G of something. And then we have you know, a big end where J <coughs> starts with um, the term that we uh, start with the lowest possible term, so this is a 1 being the lowest, and all the way to 64. Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, of P of J. And this is the first term. <coughs> and then number 4 is the last term. So the last term is um, having J starting exactly at <coughs> the P index that we want, which is um, 37. <coughs> and where it ends is not actually important. It ends at 64. And then we have a G of um, 36 here. So that's the last one. <coughs> so now we get to number 5. So the question is, how many things are between uh, the conjunction of part three and the conjunction of part four? Or, you know, to all together, you know, in order to go from J being starting at one to J starting at 37. So there are 37. But there's an extra one, which is on the, uh, <coughs> the right hand side of the whole thing. So the total is 38, a fan out of 38. In this case. Alright, so let's go to question number three. <coughs> Alright, so for question number three, um, <coughs> it's asking how is C2 defined where U is uh, the bit pattern. So to specify the answer for part one of is the one U plus one, which is the of the bit pattern u plus one. <coughs> okay, look at the two in a signed representation as the sign bit. What is the value of this bit, meaning the sign bit, for representation not the answer is zero. <coughs> Part three is negative ten. Uh, the binary representation of absolute x is, okay, so let me see what is x again, negative 10, okay. So x is negative 10, absolute value of x is therefore 10. <coughs> so the binary representation is 10 is known as 1010 in base 2. So we need the sign, so it is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 in base 2, and therefore it uses 5 bits. Now this extra 0 here has to be here because of <coughs> what we talk about in part 2, that you know there's a sign bit, and in the case of a uh, non-negative value, the sign bit is a 0. So part 4 is asking about the same thing. Um, oh, okay, I'm not done yet. Uh, now we have to compute your C of C2 of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 in base 2. And that is the negation, the bitwise knot of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 in base 2 plus 1, which in this case is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 in base 2 plus 1, which is then 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 in base 2. Sorry. I <clears throat> I kept saying in base 10, but it's actually in base 2. 
all those portions. All right, so for part four, y is negative six. So y is negative six. The absolute value of negative six is just six. So uh, six is represented <coughs> as one, one, zero in base two, but we need an extra sign. So that means we need four bits. So negative six is the C two of zero, one, one, zero in base two, because negation, arithmetic negation, and uh, C2 are basically doing the same thing. So in this case, you know, we have um, uh, C1 of 0, 1, 1, 0 in base 2, plus 1, which is then uh, the bitwise not of that, plus 1, which is 1, 0, 0, 1 in base 2, plus 1, which is then 1, 0, 1, 0 in base 2. <coughs> So for part five, it asks um, x and y are used to are uh, to use the same number of bits, which is the width, to represent them. What is the minimum num minimum number? And that means you know w has to be the larger of the two, since you know, one uses five bits, the other one uses four, so w has to be five. And on line six, um, this is the signed binary representation of negative 16 out of the range of <coughs> in a, a w bit where w is 5 in this case use the previous part to help answer this question explain your conclusion so in this case you know, the uh, we basically say the range range of w bit signed integer is negative 2 to the power of w minus 1 to positive 2 to the power of negative, uh, w minus 1 the whole thing subtract 1 and since uh, negative 16 is <coughs> uh, greater than or equal to uh, negative 2 to the power of um, uh, let's see 5 minus 1 which is um, 4 uh, then it is in range, in range. There we go. All right, moving on to the last question. <clears throat> what is the decimal representation of the value represented by the Y row? So let's answer this one here. Uh, so basically Y in base 10 is two times seven to the power of two plus four times seven to the power of one plus 6 times 7 to the power 0. So that would be 98 plus 28 plus uh, 6. And that would be what? <coughs> um, 116 plus 6, which is, I think, 122. There we go. <coughs> And then for part two, it wants you to define the functions, <coughs> excuse me, R and W. So there are two ways to do this, you know, but in class I use you know, seven plus U, the whole thing, minus the W, and then this entire thing, a uh, mod seven. <coughs> but adding the seven first deal to U is actually not really needed because we tested that in class. So the b function is easier because you know, if v is less than w, then return a 1, otherwise return a 0. <coughs> q of i is the r of x i y i. Uh, d of i is the r of q i t i. <coughs> t of i plus 1 is the b of um, x i y i or the B of QI, TI. <coughs> and now we need to uh, resolve the, the values. Okay, so what I will do is I'm just replicating the uh, subtraction here. Um, oh, okay, that's not what I want to do. Okay, back, back, there we go. 
<coughs> we have a zero here, and then we have one zero five here. All right, so now let's figure out figure this out. <coughs> we need something, you know, subtracting six, you know, to give us a five, and since you. Know, <coughs> um, so 5 plus 6, okay, so normally we just add the 5 to the 6, which is 11, but 11 cannot be represented by a single digit in base 7. So we need a borrow, in other words, you know, the uh, 7 out of 11 is represented by the borrow of the next column, <coughs> and then the remaining portion, which is 11 minus uh, 7, which is a 4, is here. 5 minus 0 is just 5, not a problem. All right, so on the next row, we have something minus 4 being a 0, so that has to be a 4. 0 minus 1 <coughs> in base 7 is, um, so the way we do this is to say 0 is not uh, greater than or equal to 1, so we have to borrow 1, which makes it a 7. 7 minus 1 is a 6. There we go. So now we need something minus 2 to be a 1. 1 plus 2 is a 3, and 3 can be represented in base 7. So 3 minus 2 is a 1, 1 minus 1 is a 0, and we have no overall borrow here. So that's how we answer part 3. Part 4 asks, what is the dig uh, decimal representation of the D row? So this time we have 0 times 7 squared, plus 6 times 7 to the power of 1, plus <coughs> 5 times 7 to the power of 0. So that will give us a 42 plus 5, which is a 47. There we go. All right. So I think that's it for the entire test. Yep, that's it. Cool. All right. So I'm going to upload this, you know, um, just a little bit later. And then you guys will all have access to this.